Let's look at an example of a confidence Z interval. And this confidence interval focuses on the population standard deviation. So this is one of the, this is like one of the practice problems. I've changed the number slightly so that you'll have more practice with the ones that are already in there. So the U.S. Census Bureau conducts a study to determine the time needed to complete the short form. The Bureau surveys 275 people. The sample mean is 10.4 minutes. It is a known standard deviation of 3.2 minutes. The population distribution is assumed to be normal. Construct a 95% confidence interval for the population mean time to complete the forms and answer the questions below. Okay, so what is the population standard deviation? When it says it's the known standard deviation or the population standard deviation, you know that's the one that you're looking at. So for this one, it's 3.2. What's the sample mean? Well, it tells me right here, it's 10, 0.4. My sample size, my sample size is 275. So if you see from here, I'm getting all the information from my problem. Again, you could have a data set where you have to get your sample mean and your sample size, but that population standard deviation has to be given to you. If it is not given to you, there's another kind of confidence interval that we look at, and that will be in the next lesson. All right. So what is my confidence level? Well, it's right here. It's 95%. Even though it says confidence interval, I need to make the interval. I have to know my confidence level. They go hand in hand. So a 95% confidence interval means that I want to be 95% confident that my population mean is going to fall within that range. Okay, so I'm going to bring up my calculator, turn it on. So I'm going to go to stats, test, Go down to Z interval, you see it right here. Oops, and I skipped it right here, and I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to press stats because I don't have a data set. If I had a data set, I'd go ahead and put it in the calculator, and then I'd go hit data to call to it. Okay, what's my population standard deviation? It's 3.2. My sample mean is 10.4. My sample size is 275, and then my confidence level is 95. Again, you can put it as a decimal or you can leave it as a whole number. It's not a big deal. And then I'm going to go down, excuse me, and hit calculate. <clears throat> All right, so what do I get? I get Z interval, which tells me this is a confidence interval using the population standard deviation. My lower bound is 10.02. My upper bound is 10.78. I'm going to round up. Okay, what does this mean? This means that the lowest I believe my population could be is 10.02, and the highest is 10.78. It's kind of like, think of your population mean being in a fence, and your population mean is sitting in this fence and you have a lower bound for the fence and you have an upper bound for the fence, but you know that your population mean is contained in that fence. Okay, so for here, this is gonna be 10.02 and this one is gonna be 10.78. So let's quickly go do this in the website. So let me go to the website, if it'll come up. Okay, I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna go back to here. So I'm on the social sci statistics page. I go to calculators. I go all the way down and I go to confidence intervals with the Z statistic. So under confidence intervals, I click it. Remember my sample mean, if you don't, my sample mean was 10.4. My sample size was 275. And my, my standard deviation, if I go back and look, Oops, sorry about that. My sample standard, or excuse me, my sta population standard deviation is 3.2. So I'm going to put 3.2 in. Even though it's asking for the sample standard deviation, you want to put the population standard devi deviation in there. And the, sample, the confidence level is 95%, and I'm making sure, yes, 95%. I hit calculate. And look what I get. I get the exact same values we got in the calculator. So this is just another way to do it. And I really like this because if you can look at it, it might be kind of small on your screen, and I apologize. It says 
you can be 95% confident that the population mean falls between 10.02 and 10.778. So that's great. So it gave me the exact same thing. So you choose what you want to do, the website or the calculator. And if you have the calculator and you want to do the website, that's fine. So here we go. What is the arrow bound margin? All right, there's two ways I can do this. The first way I think is the easiest is I'm going to do 10.78, which is my upper bound, minus 10.4, which is my sample mean. So we bring up my calculator. So, oops, 10, oops, let me clear that out. 10.78 minus 10.4 gives me 0.38. Okay, so that was one way I could do it. And then the next way, I'm going to scroll down so you can see it better, is I'm going to do 10.4 minus 10.02. And again, I'm going to use my calculator for that. So I'm going to do 10, oops, sorry about that, 10.4 minus 10.02. And look what happens. I get the exact same answer when I hit enter. Same answer. So what's my error bound margin? 0.38. Thanks.